The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning and welcome to St. George's, uh, the Anglican Parish of the Blue Mountains. Uh, as you've likely heard by now, uh, within the Diocese of Huron, all Anglican congregations have unfortunately closed their doors for worship services during this time of, of careful reflection and cautionary measures in, uh, in response to the COVID-19 virus. And so at St. George's, we, we want everyone uh, to feel connected to our community. We want to reassure everyone that the presence of God is still alive here in our church, in our prayer lives, and in our homes. So uh, our goal will be to be able to share a little video with you each week, uh, and perhaps even becoming a daily practice, uh, for you to be able to tune into on our Facebook page and in our St. George's website. Uh, so let's share a little time of worship, uh, you and I together. Uh, I invite you to, to participate as you can in the response to the prayers, and I'll share a little bit of readings and reflection with you today. Let us begin. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. And this is the collect for the third Sunday uh, in Lent. And together we pray. Almighty God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, gives the water of eternal life, may we always thirst for you, the spring of life and the source of goodness. Through him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading that I'd like to share with you today comes from the 95th Psalm. And in it, the psalmist writes this. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the caverns of the earth and the heights of his hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Now I'd like to share a reading from our gospel today. This is a reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now on that day, Jesus came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, and it was located near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's famous well was located there, and Jesus, who was tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. Now it was about noon when these events occurred. At that time, a Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, give me a drink. Now Jesus' disciples had gone into the city to go out and buy food, and he was left alone. The Samaritan woman said to Jesus, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? For at that time Jews did not share things in common with Samaritans. And Jesus answered the woman, If you knew the gift of God, and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Now the woman looked at Jesus and said, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us this well, and with his sons and flocks drank from it? And Jesus said to the woman, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. And the woman said to Jesus, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water again. 
Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come back. And the woman answered him, I have no husband. And Jesus said to her, You are right, saying, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one that you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. And the woman said to her, to Jesus, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is Jerusalem. And Jesus replied to her, Woman, believe me, that the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know, and we worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. Know that God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. And the woman said to Jesus, I know that Messiah is coming, the one who is called the Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. And Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Now, just as Jesus was saying this, his disciples returned. And they were astonished that Jesus was speaking with the woman. And one said, well, no one said, I should say, what do you want to her? Why are you speaking with her? Then at that time, the woman left her water jar and she returned back to the, the city that she came from. And as she saw people along the way, she said, Come and see a man who told me everything that I had done. Now many Samaritans from that city came to believe in Jesus because of this woman's testimony. He told me everything I've ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked Jesus to stay with him, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the Samaritan woman, It is no longer because of you that we believe, for we've heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that I speak to you in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. A few years ago, uh, I officiated a funeral in downtown London at the beautiful old Bishop Cronin Memorial Church, a church that sadly uh, has since that time closed. When the funeral service was over and I had recessed the pallbearers and the casket and all the family out of the church to meet the hearse at the corner of the street, I then made my way back through the congregation to shake hands and express condolences. The reception for the funeral was going to take place at another location, so one by one the families gradually began to leave until there was just a few people remaining standing outside the church. And as I was just about to slip back into the church to help a few people clean up, a person approached me and asked this question. She said, excuse me, Mr. Minister, and I said, yes. She said, can I ask you a question? Please do, I encouraged. Do you know if you've been reborn, she asked me. Now this caught me off guard. Uh, I looked at the woman a little bit more closely and couldn't quite picture her from the faces of the people who had attended the funeral service. As it turns out, she hadn't attended the funeral, but had just spotted me while walking past the church. Now to be honest, my first thoughts towards her weren't all that charitable. I think I started uh, thinking, What's with me attracting crazy street corner people every time I hang out in downtown London? But then I looked at this woman, and she didn't look confused or upset or emotionally charged in any way. And so I answered her honestly. I think that I have experienced the feeling of being reborn. Now, her response was to have a look of doubt on her face. I had the impression that she was looking for a little bit more certainty in my response. But then again, I was the one wearing the ridiculous clergy clothes, complete with a medieval-looking funeral cloak, 
and technically I was the one standing on the downtown street corner. Then I had a moment of clearer thought. What do you mean when you say, have you been reborn? She didn't answer me right away. I could tell that she was thinking. And then she said, for me being reborn means to live my life knowing that Jesus is with me, knowing that he's constantly helping me and saving me. Now, I thought that was an amazing answer and I told her so. I then explained that I live my life, I live my faith, seeking to have a consciousness for Christ, an awareness of his presence around me and in others. I seek to be uh, aware of his relationship with me and of his guidance and grace in my life. Now she seemed to think that was an okay answer too. Our conversation closed with her asking for a prayer for her family, and then she touched me on the shoulder before going on her way. Now, in reflecting on today's gospel, I remembered this uh, chance encounter with this woman, and it made me think about the interpretation of this passage in a new way. The more that I thought about it, the more I was startled by some of the coincidences. I am a firm believer that some things are meant to happen, and this woman was meant to be because she's changed the way that I see the lesson that Jesus shares with us today. In our gospel, it is Jesus who approaches an unknown woman at the crossroads desert location of Jacob's well. Not only does Jesus approach her, but he also seeks to enter into a conversation with her. Now, I've looked at this passage a number of different ways over the years, uh, but here's a slightly newer perspective, or my perspective, that I can share with you today. What does it mean to have a consciousness for Christ? I think it's fair to say that before encountering Jesus, the Samaritan woman had no personal understanding of God, nor was she aware of the salvation that Jesus sought to share with her. What we do know is that the woman at the well is kind, especially when she finds herself in an unexpected conversation with a strange Jewish man, Jesus. The Samaritan woman's life had been strongly shaped by her role in society, by the work teaching and practices of her culture. It certainly wasn't easy for any woman to haul water for her family with the regular trips to the well. All of this would have been exhausting, but very familiar to her. But she was, we know through the passage that she was hardworking and determined, and she was probably caught off guard by a sudden spiritual conversation that Jesus initiates with her. Jesus takes a chance encounter from this woman and turns it into an experience of self-reflection. It's the same sort of self-reflection that we are called to be engaging with during our own personal Lenten journeys. And as Jesus has her reflect on a new way of living, one that she's never encountered before, what does it mean to live with the understanding of a personal relationship with God? How does a personal understanding and relationship with God reshape the way that you live your life? Now, Jesus begins the entire conversation by asking for a drink of water. The woman then shares her understanding of water. She knows all about water. She travels miles to obtain it every day. But Jesus invites her to consider a different type of water, the living water of eternal life that's found only as a gift from God. Before meeting Jesus, this woman has never considered the possibility of eternal life. She's never really considered life outside of her own daily context, outside of the restrictive possibilities of her culture, her role in her family, and the daily labors of her life. By encountering Jesus, she suddenly becomes aware that there are possibilities in her life within a much larger context. As Jesus shares with her, her eyes are open to experience the world in a completely new way. Is eternal life a possibility? Is a personal relationship with God even possible? And Jesus stands there with her and explains that both are true. That in fact, it is the Son of God who asks her for a drink. And in return, he wishes her to taste of the waters of eternal life. When some Christians speak of being born again, what they're usually referring to is a moment in their lives when their eyes have suddenly been opened to God's grace 
and to new possibilities within a much larger context of a life that includes a relationship with the Son of God, a life that extends further than just our mundane activities that occupy most of our time, of a life that exceeds anything that we could ever do on our own without God. Now that chance encounter with the Samaritan woman has an impact in her life that changes her forever. Not only does it change the life, her individual life, but also changes the life of those that she goes out and shares this encounter with. She goes and tells anyone that will listen to her, I met a man who knew everything about me. And now she wanted to know everything about him. For in this man I've been given knowledge of new and eternal life. The scriptures say that because of the Samaritan woman, many others were brought to faith because of her testimony. And I'm so glad, uh, in my own strange way, that I had this unexpected encounter with a woman at the corner of Bishop Cronin Memorial Church. Uh, the honest truth of remembering her in preparation for this gospel is that there are days where, in my life, I get so busy or so anxious that I forget to have a Christ consciousness of my own. Days where I forget that in my relationship with God, that because of Jesus, everything is larger than the work that I do, or the way that I live, or the goals that I strive for. I find that I need to be constantly re reminded that a life in Christ, a reborn life, is one in which we always need to be seeking the presence of Jesus in the ways that we engage with him. We need to do it honestly, and every one of us does it in our own way. The reward for having a Christ consciousness is the assurance that in our relationship with God, we are opened up to a new condition for our lives. We are given the gift of eternal waters, living waters, a gift that comes only from God and can be received when we live our lives for God, when we open ourselves to his presence, his forgiveness, and his grace. So yes, I, w I guess I would say, if I were to meet that woman again on the corner uh, in London, that I have been reborn, and I thank her uh, for the various ways that she's caused me to reflect on it. How about you? Is this a question that you would answer comfortably? Have you been reborn? Uh, I hope and pray that each and every one of us can respond in our own authentic way and that we have, can all share the stories of how our lives have been touched and transformed by Jesus. I pray that all that I've shared with you this day may be pleasing in God's sight. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us uh, close our time together today with prayers for ourselves and for our community. Uh, in response to my invitation of saying, Lord, in your love, please join me by saying, hear our prayer. God knows us completely and loves us completely, meeting us where we are and provides us with living water to satisfy all of our needs. And so we pray. Thirsty for God, we pray to you, Lord, now, in the knowledge that you will provide for us all that is best for us in our lives. Heavenly Father, wherever the church is dry and parched, may the water of your Spirit well up, refresh us, and renew our lives to bring us closer to you so that we may experience new growth. Lord, make us more aware of our thirst for you so that when we come to you, we will be ready and eager to receive the living water that you offer. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, from the conflicting needs and the agendas of the world, we cry out for your mercy. We pray for a deeper understanding of one another and a greater desire for cooperation and peace. We pray for sensitivity in handling delicate negotiations and the wisdom that respects and listens to all people. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. We pray that in all of our relationships, you will make us effective channels of your love and your forgiveness. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, make us awash with your living water so that our homes and our places of work, our shopping, and our leisure activities, our conversations, and our actions 
will always be in touch with the renewing power of God. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. Today at St. George's, we stand alongside all those who are suffering at this time, remembering those who are close to us and naming them silently or aloud. Pray for all those who have been impacted and had their lives put in harm's way as a result of the COVID-19 virus. We pray for all those who are suffering today, whether in body, mind, or spirit. Those who long for your healing, O Lord, and your comfort. Those who need your strength for perseverance and your patience in dark times. We long for your living spirit to envelop and sustain them. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. Lastly, we pray for those who have come to the end of their, etern their eternal life, of their earthly life. We ask that you would grant them your eternal life. Have mercy on them. May they, placing their faith in the God of life, share in the light and joy of heaven forever. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. O oh God, how we need you. We thank you for supplying us and coaxing us forth with such tenderness and affection. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. May we conclude our time of worship together today uh, by praying our doxology. And we say, Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your heart and mind in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and all those you love and pray for this day and always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us today for our time of worship here at St. George's. While the doors of our church may be closed temporarily, our worship and our community relationships continue. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.